I sure don't want to miss out on the rapture. You ever dawn on you to ask God what time it is? What time is it in my life? What do I need to handle first before I handle everything else? But sometimes I feel so distracted and pulled in all different directions. I don't know what to do first. I don't know what to lay aside. I don't know what to cut off from my life. I'm just, I'm caught up in a whirlwind of confusion. Lord, help me. This is a mess I've got myself into. Well, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. And the title of this sermon today was Time is Running Out. Now, what I want to share with you is that dum diddy dum dum <clears throat> that's me, pushed the record button and it took a picture rather than record. So now I have to give you the short version of what the long sermon was about. So I hope this blesses you anyway. The bottom line about the message that we shared at God's Church of Love Online at 1215 today was that God wants us to be prepared. He wants us to get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, because time is running out. Time is running out for a number of things. Number one, the rapture is on our heels, y'all. Are you ready? Number two, some of you are going to beat the rapture to the punch, which means your day to join the Lord in eternity could be a lot sooner than you think. Number three, time is running short for some of you who have opportunities and you're dragging your feet, not taking the steps you need to take to take advantage of those opportunities, which God will use to bless you with. So, Knowing all that, let's look at how we are to dress for these different occasions. For the opportunities, we must at times go back to school, we must take lessons, we must learn trades, we must take our knowledge to a higher level. If we want to get closer to God, we must delve deeper into the Word, we must attend places where the, where the word, the anointed word is being preached, not man's opinion, not gospel gossip, but the word is being preached. We must read the word, not as a holy exercise, but we must do it in a way of learning God's heart, learning what makes him smile, what hurts him, what excites him, what disappoints him, <clears throat> and live accordingly. Now, the thing we have to remember is there are times in the Old, in the New Testament where Jesus said people will come saying, Lord, didn't I prophesy? Some of you prophesy. Or didn't I do miracles? Some of you have miracle working gifts. Or didn't I do many wonders in your name? And you may have gotten many people saved and healed. And, and cast out devils, for example. But you do not want Jesus to say, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. You don't want to hear that. So we have to be very careful every single day. We have to do a self-assessment. We have to ask God to show us where we are falling short because we all fall short. But as much as we can stay on top of that, we can be more assured that when the rapture comes, if we are still on this planet, we will be part of that rapture. As Dr. Uh, Dotson says, we won't see the rapture, we will be the rapture. But those of you who see the rapture and are left behind, then you have to learn a whole new segment of what do I do while going through the tribulation period? I would advise you to read Revelations, the book of Revelation. Okay, so moving right along, the thing we have to be careful about, <clears throat> how we live, what we ingest, who we hang with, places we go, the type of entertainment, games, movies, arenas, whatever, the type of entertainment we engage in, 
the type of people we hang with, the type of conversations we get involved with. We have to be careful. Some of you are trying to make your life better and Satan is conveniently placing a person in your life that matches your description of Mr. Right or Mrs. Right. And guess what? They're as wrong as two left shoes because that's not what you're supposed to be doing now. And you know it. So you have to set aside your distractions, right? You have to move aside all the things that take away your focus, all the things that drain your energy. There are people that will drain your energy if you let them. You cannot allow it. Not now. Time is running out. You cannot allow that. Now, the other thing you have to be careful of is yourself. You have to guard your heart. You have to guard your motives. You have to be very honest with yourself and God so that you don't get caught up in self-deception. Some people live a life of delusion. They believe that as long as they say nice things about God, nice things are going to happen for them. But that's not where it stops. Some of you are battling your pride. God's trying to get you to go certain routes because that is the route that will lead you to your biggest blessings. But you don't want to go that route because you're ashamed. You don't want to get that kind of help because you're a child of God. Let God do the supplying of your needs. That might be one of the ways he's doing it. But you're refusing God's hand by refusing the help he has put in front of you. You don't like that source of help because you think you're better than the people who are getting that help. So what do you do? You refuse the help and you're stuck right where you've been for how many years now? Do you recognize that as possible, as possibly being your pride, your arrogance, your haughtiness? Hmm? You call it living by faith and God may call it living like a fool. What are you doing? God has all these things prepared for his children, but some of us refuse to go that route. And the sad part is some of us only have one route that's going to bring all the blessings. And that's the very one we're refusing. Anyway, so I'm not going to be long, but be ready. Time is running out. The rapture is on our heels, y'all. What kind of life are you living? Hmm? You know, in Isaiah 61, it talks, it calls God's people as trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Do you realize that when you take the axe to the root and you chop the roots, the tree dies? Some of you are trying to get by with God by chopping off the branches because you're not ready to get rid of that root. You're not ready to get rid of that tree and its roots. You just want to cut off the ugly branches. But guess what? Another one's going to take its place. That tree's not going to die because you cut off the branches. You need some things in your life to die so that it doesn't weigh you down when God's trying to pull us up, 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 and away. You hear me? So you have to make sure that you work with God at cutting that tree at the root. Not every tree is a good tree, y'all. Some trees can wreak havoc in your life. And trees represent people. You need to get rid of some people. You need to cut off relationships. They will sap your strength. But if you cut those things at the root, and they're no longer part or parcel of your life, they cannot interfere with God's plan any longer. And that's what Satan is great at doing. He's great at running interference. You hear me? Don't let him do it. Take authority, bind, rebuke, obey God, do whatever you got to do. But you take that, you take the reins and put it back in God's hands and do it God's way. Do whatever he wants you to do his way, even if you feel like you're ashamed to do it. 
do it anyway. It may be God's way of humbling you. You hear me? That's what it might be, a way of God's humbling you. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. But will you humble, or will you refuse and walk away? Wow. Sometimes your route to a blessing is an apology. Sometimes you got to go to a person you know you did wrong. You know you did them wrong. You may not be sorry about it, but you know you did them wrong. And you may need to ask God to help you make that right. And once God sees you trying to undo the wrong, that may be the only way to get your blessings fulfilled. But if you never acknowledge that you did them wrong and you never try to make it right, some things may never happen in your life. You hear me? Because that one act is the doorknob and the lock to that door, to your all of your opportunities. But you won't put your hand on that doorknob because you don't want to deal with it. So you remain stuck, chasing your tail, getting nowhere fast, digging a pit deeper and deeper and deeper. That becomes your lifelong self. Okay, I'm done. That's the short version of today's message. You must pray. You must read. You must ask God. You must listen for God's answers. Do you hear me? And then you must do what he tells you to do or stop doing what he's tell what he has told you to stop doing. All right, I'm done. Mm -hmm.